is gonna be a deeply unserious video about all the makeup trends I wanna see die in 2024. Now, I don't wanna upset you. This isn't a personal attack on you if you do any of these trends, but you know, there's just a lot of trends where I think we're gonna look back on our life and say, what were we thinking that looks so dated? And if you're new here, I'm Kate. I tend to have a more minimal approach to makeup. I'm a corporate girly, I got a nine to five. So I need super beginner friendly makeup products that I can practically slap on in the dark. And I like owning a smaller makeup collection for a YouTuber. So if that's your kind of thing, I hope you'll subscribe and let's get started. The number one trend that I just want to die so badly is naming everything. I mean, I feel like it started with maybe the glazed donut nails in recent years, but I can't really remember what was the first one. And it got to the point where all of a sudden every single makeup look down to the nitty gritty nail color had to have a name for it. On one hand, it's not that serious. It's just a fun little makeup trend. And it's a fun way for all of us to participate in the same thing on social media and just come up with new beauty ideas. But there are some times when it's either problematic or just plain annoying. For example, I think when Hailey Bieber did her like chocolate glazed lips or whatever it was, she was using a darker brown lip liner and then a lighter colored gloss. That was something that all of a sudden sparked a movement and everybody was doing it, but women of color have been doing that for ages and it never became a trend. And then there's the clean girl trend and there's the implication that if your makeup isn't, you know, perfectly simplified and clean with your hair slicked back and perfect skin, that the opposite would be a dirty girl. So there are just some of these trends that I think are a little bit problematic, but then you have the ones that just bother me in my soul, like blueberry nails. It's just blue nail polish. And in a lot of ways, I think it's Gen Z's way of kind of claiming certain makeup trends that have been around for generations. Like we've all been wearing blue nail polish, but suddenly Gen Z calls it blueberry nails and it's a whole different thing. And then once Gen Z makes it a thing and it picks up some traction on social media, then it gets the attention of the marketing teams. And then your entire Instagram feed becomes all about that trend and everything just looks really monotonous. Everybody looks the same. I really miss seeing uniqueness in the beauty space. And that's a perfect segue into my next one, which is viral everything. I feel like every product people ask me to review these days is always like the viral this, the viral that. And most of the time the products are just okay. This definitely has to do with the TikTok algorithm and the way that it is so specifically curated. For example, I saw this heated round brush on my TikTok two days ago and I was really interested in it because I've been wanting to find a product that can give me that kind of blowout look for fine, you know, short hair. So I watched the ad all the way to the end and now every other video on my TikTok is an ad for that heated round brush. And I'm not even on beauty talk. I just follow North Sea talk, the nine month cruise talk, comedy TikTok, and random videos of cute puppies. But I engaged with that one ad and now it is the only thing that I'm seeing in every other video is like the viral heated round brush, the viral heated round brush on TikTok shop. And if something has viral in the title, it is the quickest way for me to not buy it because I know that that's just a big marketing ploy. Viral products do not equate to the product being good. And what's disappointing on the creator end of viral trends is if you don't participate in those viral trends, your content doesn't perform as well. And everybody just kind of feeds into that viral product and that viral movement. Everybody suddenly wants to do that same viral makeup look and try that same viral product to get views on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube. And then it just becomes this cyclical nature of all of us looking the same and doing the same thing and reviewing the same product. Obviously there have always been trends, there have always been viral moments, but more than ever, every brand wants a viral moment. Every creator wants a viral moment. And I'm just sick of it. I don't care for the viral products. They're usually not that great anyways. It's just a way to get people to spend money. The next trend I want to die is advent calendars. So I just got my first advent calendar and it was from YSL. They sent me this beautiful advent calendar and I was so excited, but then I opened them and it's all minis. My brain doesn't really see minis when I open my makeup drawers. I feel like my brain just skips over the minis. It doesn't even recognize them for some reason. I just don't get any use out of mini products. And I also noticed all of the minis had pretty cheap feeling thin plastic packaging, whereas YSL full size products are known for having higher end luxury packaging. And I mean, that's the premium that you're really paying for. So if you're not even getting the high quality YSL packaging in the advent calendar minis, what's the premium for besides the brand name? And before any of you ask for it, I did send the advent calendar to a subscriber. So it's already gone. It's going to a very loving home, but I just knew I wasn't gonna reach for it. And the second reason I just don't like advent calendars, I don't know if this is my neurodivergency talking, but I really don't like surprises. So especially those advent calendars that are like mystery boxes. Mm -mm -mm. My brain doesn't want that, I can't handle it. I'm not gonna spend money on something that's a mystery box. You bet your bottom dollar my hard earned money is not gonna be going to something that I don't even know what I'm buying. That's insane to me. And the majority of the time I see influencers reviewing advent calendars, which is limited because I don't really like watching that content. I feel like most of the time people say the advent calendars are just Okay, so that's a trend I'm over. Oh, okay, another trend I really wanna see die in 2024 are cream stick blushes. They're all the same. 
They all even have the same color scheme. If you compare the Persona like Dreamstick blushes to the Summer Fridays and countless others, they are so similar. I find that cream blushes that are in a stick format just do not last on my skin at all. And I feel like they just look okay. I've never been wowed by a cream blush stick. I personally find liquid blushes to be so much more skin-like, so much more blendable. And I find that they last a lot longer on my skin as long as they don't have a super dewy finish. And the reason this was top of my mind is I got an email yesterday from a brand wanting to do sponsored content with me. They were launching this new line of cream blush sticks and bronzer and contour sticks. And they looked exactly the same as the Persona ones and the Summer Friday ones and the M Cosmetics one. They even had the same colors in like the tan or cream beige packaging. And let me tell you, I could really use that money right now because I'm drowning in medical bills. I'm trying to furnish a brand new home. I'm just draining everything I have but I cannot in good conscience do an ad for a product I'm not excited about. And I'm just so sick of cream blushes. And I'm also just a little bit sick of everybody just giving those cream blush sticks rave reviews. But I feel like, yeah, they look okay, but they're nothing life-changing. Maybe that's just because I'm not a cream blush stick person. And if that's your favorite format for a cream blush, then you're so excited about that and you don't care how many look the same. And if that's your perspective, I totally get it. But this is just me. And I feel like all of the cream blush sticks look the same. The packaging is the same. The formulas are the same and the color schemes are the same. There's just really not much innovation. I just don't get excited about cream blush sticks. And it seems like I'm the only person who feels that way. Another trend I wanna see die in 2024 are lip oils. I'm so over lip oils. Oils. Once that lip oil trend popped off, everybody started launching lip oils. And if you don't know me, lip oils are kind of the antithesis of everything I like in a lip product. I like products that are thicker, that have some cushion to them, that are a little bit tacky or sticky so they last longer. And I tend to find that products that have more of that thicker texture really smooth over lip lines. And I just find that lip oils are thin and runny and slippery. They don't nourish my lips at all. They don't flatter my lips. The pigment tends to kind of settle into lines. They're usually too sheer and the colors barely look different from each other. I just feel like I'm getting punked. Lip oils are the most lackluster, underwhelming lip product I have ever tried. The only lip oil that I actually like are the In Beauty Lip Glazes because they have a stickier formula compared to a lot of others. So I find that they aren't as runny and they don't slide around my lip lines. I also love that they come in a ton of different scents and flavors. Some of them are really sheer. Some of them have a little bit of shimmer. Some of them are more opaque. And I really like that range and the differences between the In Beauty Lip Glazes. But if you look at something like the Milani Fruit Fetish Lip Oils, the Elf Glow Reviver lip oils, the Dior lip oils, the Rem Beauty. So many of them are just the same thing. But I think the NYX ones had a little bit more pigment. I haven't tried them, but it does look like they're more pigmented. I've just never worn a lip oil and been left feeling like, wow, that was such an amazing product. That felt amazing. It conditioned my lips and it made me look great. I just never have a great experience with lip oils. And this is a great segue into my next one. So the next trend I want to see die in 2024 are brands marketing products based on the trend versus what their actual formula is. And and the perfect example of this is the Rare Beauty lip oil. Rare Beauty clearly was developing a K-Beauty style lip stain. I'm wearing this one, the shade Wonder right now on my lips, and it's not a lip oil. It's just a lip stain. Like it's a gel stain. Nothing about it is a lip oil. And yet it's called a lip oil because they just wanted to hop on that beauty train and get on the trend so that people would buy it. But that's really misleading. And it bothers me when a product is marketed as something that it's not. Take the YSL All Hours Concealer. I recently tried that and I'll leave a review linked on the screen above. It's one of the worst concealers I've ever tried, but it's marketed as as a full coverage concealer. And I would say it's light medium at best. And every person I've talked to who's tried that concealer has said the same thing. I just want transparent marketing. I want companies to market their product accurately. So I have all the information to know if I want to purchase that product. I don't know why I've been holding this next to my face the whole time. <laughs> I just don't know why brands market their products differently from what they are, because doesn't that mean that then everybody returns the product because they were expecting something else and then that impacts their bottom line? Wouldn't it be better to just market your product accurately and then deal with less returns? I don't know, maybe that's just me. The next trend I wanna see dye in 2024 is facial filler. And if you have filler, I totally don't mean this as a judgment against you. I totally support whatever you need to do to make yourself feel good, whether that's plastic surgery, filler, whatever. However, I have gone down a deep dive of looking at lots of plastic surgery videos on TikTok and on YouTube. And one of the things that so many plastic surgeons are saying is that filler does not get absorbed by the body like we originally thought. I'll leave a video on the screen above. I can't remember the creator's name. She's huge. So I'm sure you guys will know her. Stephanie Lang, Lang, Lange. 
I can't remember, but I'll leave a video on the screen that's relevant. And you know, they basically analyzed a patient's face after I think like 30 years of filler. And you couldn't tell that she had the filler in her face, but when they did the scans, they could see that she still had like, it was something crazy, 30%, 50%, some crazy amount of filler still left in her face. And while I don't know the longer term health effects of that, and I'm sure it's probably fine, I do have hypermobile EDS and a bunch of chronic illnesses. So I'm very, very conservative with what I do with my body. Like I get Botox once a year. I mean, my Botox wears off after like four months. I last got mine in April. And as you can see, it is fully unfrozen and I'm not really bothered by that. So I don't feel the need to constantly get my Botox redone and have just perfect baby smooth face. If that's something that you do, no judgment at all. Like, you know, whatever you need to do to make yourself feel good. But filler for me just seems to be a little bit problematic because everybody's starting to look the same. God, I miss when teenagers weren't getting nose jobs constantly. Like I just feel that noses are so special and like you're your nose is your your most you're like your most unique signifier about your face and with most trends and most surgeons and most people wanting some eurocentric type of beauty and you know smaller thinner pointier nose everybody just ends up looking the same I watch a lot of Lori Hill on YouTube because it really honestly helps my self-esteem to see that some of my favorite celebrities who I think are just the epitome of beauty paid a lot of money to look that way. And I've just seen her do so many videos on celebrities that get filler and filler and filler and then their cheeks end up looking swollen. And then all of a sudden you compare their photo now to a photo of them from five years ago and they look unrecognizable. And there is a little bit of a push and a pull in my mind because on one hand, like I've said, I totally support what people need to do to make themselves feel better as they age and to, to give themselves that boost of confidence. But it sets that's this unattainable standard of beauty that children aspire to and you know kids just see and teenagers see that everybody has the same nose and everybody's getting lip filler to have these big plump lips and then at such a young age you're thinking what's wrong with my face why are my lips this way I am so grateful that I am the age that I am that I was born in 1990 and I didn't grow up with TikTok because I probably would have had lip filler by now and you know what when I think about it my lips are probably the best shape and size for my face in fact I did a little experiment on Instagram a couple weeks ago where I, I saw this TikTok and it randomly appeared on my page because I'm not on beauty talk, but this woman overlines her lips all the way like that and then a little bit under her lip and she goes out like that. And I just wanted to see what it would look like. And I'll put, <laughs> I'll put in a picture here. So a lot of people actually DM me and they said that they thought I looked amazing and I should totally get filler. Um, <laughs> but I don't look like myself. I look like everybody else and I want to look like myself. I don't want to look like everybody else. I want to be me. And I just worry that because trends come and go, you know, filler is super popular right now, but because we're seeing evidence that it doesn't really leave the body and instead it just migrates around the face. The trend in a few years might be the antithesis of filler. And I just worry that uh, people are making, you know, semi-permanent changes to their face and they might regret it later in life and lose their uniqueness or spend a ton of money unnecessarily that puts them in a difficult financial position. So I'm not trying to knock filler entirely. I mean, who knows? Maybe at some point in my life, I'll get it because sometimes it's fun to experiment. But the more research I see from plastic surgeons, the more I'm seeing that it just might be something that will cause some, you know, some aesthetic issues later on down the line. And it also goes back to my original trend of, you know, naming every look and naming every product. Lip filler and bigger lips are trendy right now, but women of color have had bigger lips for ages and it's never been considered trendy. And so that inherently is a little bit problematic to me. And scientifically speaking, your lip size is based off of your genetics. So people with smaller lips come from colder climates. People with bigger lips come from climates where they needed more surface area to help cool down the body. At least that's what I read. But it kind of seems like those trends only apply to white girls and I have a problem with that. Oh no, there's a bug. I got to say. Oh, come on, little buddy, you got this. Come on, fly, be free. You don't want to be in my makeup room. Mm. There you go. In this household, we believe every bug deserves to live. Sidebar, but because we live in the woods, we genuinely spend like an hour every week just like saving bugs. Flies, spiders, bees, they all want to come inside, but we just gently escort them out. The next trend I want to see die in 2024 is laminated brows or like super feathery brows. I've never, ever, ever liked that look. I think it looks unnatural and you know, some of us aren't always going for natural makeup and that's totally fine, but it just doesn't look right to my brain <laughs> when when the brows are like super brushed up. It just reminds me of like my grandfather's super crazy bushy brows. Uh, I don't know, I've just never really appreciated the look of the laminated brows. And that is the one trend where I really think we're gonna look back later in life and be like, yeah, that was 2023. It's something I think is gonna be very dated. Now again, you do you. If bold feathery laminated brows gives you confidence, go for it. Do your thing, no judgment at all. But I just don't really love the look of it. And I do think it's something that was a very quick trend. Another trend I would like to see die, but it is not gonna die because everybody loves it, is super glowy, wet looking skin. Now I'm talking the kind of skin that looks like sweaty, that looks wet, the kind of skin where if someone were to come in and hug you, you'd be like, 
uh, don't get it on my shoulder. You know, that kind of skin is something that I just, I don't think it looks good. I really like a glossy cheek, but there are so many people that I see taking that glowy skin trend very, very far and their entire face looks glowy. It looks like they have a super glowy sunscreen with like a lot of mica in it. And then they have a foundation that's really glowy and dewy. And then they have like a light coverage base and then they'll do a bunch of like liquid or cream highlighter and it's just too much. I also find that the glowier the skin, the more texture emphasis there is. And that's why I love powder and powder can really help to blur the pores and just blur the skin a little bit. Now, I wouldn't say that I love matte skin. I think matte skin can look a little bit heavy, a little bit more makeup-y. I obviously prefer something in the middle, but as someone with combination skin who gets pretty oily when I'm wearing makeup, like this is the fourth time I've powdered during this video alone, I really look forward to more matte looks. And something else I've realized is I don't like the way that my shimmery blushes look on me. So often I wear these like shimmery glowy blushes and I look back on the footage and my cheeks just look weird. So I love a little bit of glow, but a strategically placed glow. And I think that this dewy, super wet looking skin is something we're going to look back on and, and definitely think it's a little bit dated. Another trend I want to see die in 2024, long pointy nails. Oh, uh, I don't like the pointy nails. I don't know. It's like the claws. It just, it, I don't know. They, they hurt my brain. <laughs> Now there are totally some people who can pull them off and they're a vibe, but honestly, I just really don't like the look of long pointy nails. I don't love long nails or fake nails in general, but the pointy ones, I just can't get on board with. And before the sun goes down, the final trend I wanna see die in 2024 is Black Friday. Fuck Black Friday, right? Are we over it? I'm over it. And now, especially with inflation and year after year, I feel like more social media accounts expose the fact that brands aren't actually giving us good deals at all. They're just kind of putting on the same price as they normally charge for the product product with sale next to it. So you think you're getting a good deal, but you're not actually getting a good deal. And then you realize you have to pay tax for it. And then there's really not any savings at all. I don't like that at all. Year after year, I just feel like I am boom bombarded with Black Friday emails. And I've unsubscribed to everything except for Sephora. So this year, I was pretty blissfully unaware of the Black Friday sales and I didn't really wanna buy anything. But then I opened my Instagram and my YouTube and all of the influencers are doing the Black Friday sale content, myself included. I did a, a Sephora shop with me video where I kind of like put a bunch of items in my cart and then talked myself out of as many items as possible. I think I did a video where I talked about In Beauty's holiday discounts too. So I'm definitely a part of that cycle, 100%. That's what you have to do as an influencer if you want views, you gotta pay to play but I'm really just not seeing the value in Black Friday sales like I used to. And so as a content creator myself, I did one or two videos. One where I was talking about Sephora sale, another where I was shopping it. But I have seen people who every day are on the YouTube community tab, like Shantakai's 25% off, this brand's 25% off, 20% off here, limited time only. And it's just, it's exhausting. It's not sustainable. None of us should be purchasing beauty at that rate, unless you're a makeup artist and need a lot of items for your kid. And I especially have a problem with Sephora's Black Friday sales because they did their regular VIB sale where Rouge gets 20%, VIB gets 15%, and Beauty Insider gets 10%. And then what did they do after that sale? A month later, they drop another sale and it's 20% off for everyone. So all of those people who are VIB or Beauty Insider who got a smaller discount code now are wishing that they had waited a month and are super bummed about that. And I feel like it's really shady. Sephora did that last year, but you never know if they're gonna do it again. So then if you hold out for the December 20% off for all sale, what if they don't do that? And then you missed your discounts entirely. I don't like how brands take advantage of consumers that way. I don't like how Sephora is structuring their sale. And most of the time it's better to shop from the brands directly anyways. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I really don't push my affiliate links or my affiliate codes. I rarely do sponsorships anymore. So engaging on my content really helps my videos to reach more people. And I gotta know what beauty trends do you wanna see die in 24? I'm sure there are so many that I missed. And you guys are always just such a phenomenal wealth of knowledge when it comes to the beauty industry. And I always love hearing your opinions. So wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.